sa Tagalog, meron tayong isang at masasabi nating kasabihan. Ang hindi lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay di makararating sa paroroonan. I don't know kung naniniwala kayo dito, pero meron po itong katotohanan sa ating buhay. He who does not, he who does not look back at where he came from will not reach his intended destination. Another statement is worth mentioning, and this is from George Santayana. Those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Kung hindi tayo natuto sa ating nakaraan, eh talagang uulitin natin ang mga pagkakamali. Now what's the use of looking back? Ano yung importante na dapat nating i-consider yung ating nakaraan, yung ating past? Our series of messages is about doing life in God's family, God's way. For two Sundays now, we have been looking at this. And two Sundays ago, we look at the reality that becoming a member of God's forever family is being born into a new culture. Kaya po, kung bagong kultura, ano po ang gagawin sa bagong kultura? We should speak the truth in love because we belong to the family of God. Last Sunday, we were exhorted that we should manifest our loving union with God by living authentic lives with one another. Walang maskara. Okay? Kung ano yung tayo, yun ang ipinapakita natin. Today, we need to consider this. And what is this principle? God wants us to surrender our painful past in order for us to receive healing and restoration. Nice lang Diyos na ibigay niya sa, bigay natin sa Kanya ang ating mga mapapait o masakit na nakaraan para tayo makareceive para matuguro niya ito at tayo po ay mabigyan niya ng pagpapagaling at ng restoration as God's people kailangan po nating maunawaan ito we need to understand how our past affects our present abilities at ano po itong kakaya natin kakaya ng mahalin ng Diyos kakaya ng mahalin ng ating kapwa at, ma- at kakaya ng mahalin ang ating sarili. Kung hindi po natin ito makikita, mahirap pong gawin yan. Our past, our past definitely affects our present. At kung makikita na natin po ito, yung po tinatawag natin healing and restoration that we have received are our credentials. Okay? In order for us to help others. Sabi nga eh, gusto mong gawin yan? Ano ang natapos mo? Ano ang credential mo? Ito po kung gusto nating tumulong sa kapwa natin, mananampalataya, sa miyembro ng pamilya, ano po yung credential natin? We are wounded healers, so to speak. Tayo po ay tumutulong sa iba sapagkat naranasan natin yung kanila pong uh, naranasan. At because naranasan natin, meron tayong pagkaunawa. At because we have received healing and restoration from the Lord, we have the capacity to extend help to others. I have entitled this message as this, Look in the Rearview Mirror. Found in the passage that we read, Genesis 50, 15 to 21. Now, the life of Joseph and his brothers provide us with a very clear picture of an unsettled past affecting the present. Kasi hindi pinagtuunan ng pansin masyado, naka-apekto yun sa kanila pong sitwasyon. Let us look at three important uh, facts or mga bagay dito po sa ating teksto ngayong hapon. Unang-una po, we have to ascertain the nature of our past. Ascertain the nature of our past. Meron po kaming miyembro sa uh, isang iglesia ang akin pong pinagpastoran na... Iba, medyo iba po ang dating. Ang kanya po medyo assertive po siya. Assertive. At may opinion. At pagwisan gusto makipag-argue. Pero ito po eh, masasabi natin, pagtitignan mo siya, palang iti, mild-mannered na tao. Pero pag kausap mo, o may mga nasa sitwasyon, kailangan na may masasabi siya. Sabi eh, bakit kaya siya ganyan? Until one day, uh, sa emotionally healthy spirituality class, nag-share siya. 
na nung kanyang nakaraan, nung daw siya bata pa, may kapatid siyang mas matanda sa kanya kuya. Pero iniwan sila ng kanilang nanay at pumunta sa state upang magtrabaho. So naiwan sila. And then definitely, because the mother was working, nagpapadala ng pera sa kanila. Buwan-buwan. Ang problema, ito kapat kuya niya, ginagasos yung pera sa vices. Okay? Sa kanyang barkada at sa kanyang sarili. So, itong lalaking ito, itong batang ito, ay masasabi nating not taken care of. Hindi siya well provided for kasi ginagasos sa ibang pamamaraan ng kanyang kapatid ang dapat sustento para sa kanila. So, talaga masasabi natin, baka gutom pa siya. Laging gutom ang kanyang nararanasan. Not only that, ang problema, eh binubugbog pa siya ng kanyang kapatid. He was being beaten up. So he was physically abused by his older brother. Kaya nung lumaki siya, at napunta sa Estados Unidos and was able to raise some kind of yung kabuhayan, nag-iba yung asta. Okay? Alam naman natin, nag-iba yung asta niya, nag-iba yung kanyang pakikitungo. Maybe he was saying, nobody would, I won't let anyone or anything hurt me anymore. So ganun ang kanyang asta. The, the past affected his present in his dealing with others. He was no longer dealing with his brother. He was dealing with co-believers in Christ, but then yung asta niya was still being affected by his past. But I learned later through my wife that this guy went back to the Philippines and the first thing that he did was visit his brother and embrace his brother and said, I love you. Wow. And that, was, that is beautiful. That is settling the unsettled thing in the past. So we praise the Lord for that. Now, in this passage, we, as we say, we have to ascertain the nature of our past. Looking at the brothers of Joseph, Joseph's brothers understood that their past actions could harm them. Definitely. In verse 15, what do we see? What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back from all the wrong things we did to him? Tamang tanong yun. Verse 17, for the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating Joseph so badly. Yung binasa natin sa Tagalog, matindi. Uh, nakalimutan ko lang salitang ginamit. Pero mas matindi sa Tagalog, ano? Uh, treating Joseph so bad badly. So makikita natin, Joseph's brothers understood. Okay? Yung kanilang kalalagayan. We know the story. Kung nagbasa tayo ng Biblia, sa Sunday School, makikita natin yung story ni Joseph. We know the story, Joseph's brothers detested. Hindi ko naman sabing namumuhi sila, pero meron silang extreme dislike kay Joseph. Bakit ka mo? Kasi paborito siya ng kalilang tatay. Pansinin nyo, yung mga kapatid ni Joseph ay iba-iba yung nanay, at least uh, tatlo ang other baliba sa nanay ni ni uh, Joseph meron pang tatlo na nanay yung mga kanyang kapatid na lalaki at si Joseph ang paborito uh, makikita natin sa picture binigyan pa ni kaya lumala binigyan pa ni uh, Jacob si Joseph ng multicolored coat at hindi pa nag-aggravate pa situation na naginip siya, nagkaroon siya ng panaginip, dream or vision, nagaling sa Panginoon, at ano yung kwento? Yung buwi, ano, ano tama ba yun? Hindi naman buwig yan eh. Uh, sheaves of uh, wheat. Yung nasa gitna, yun ang nagre-representa kay Joseph, at yung nakapaligid, yun ang mga kapatid niya, kasama na si Jacob, at lahat sila ay nagbabaw down kay Joseph. With that kind of story, and with the fact that he was the favorite, sino bang hindi magagalit? sa kanyang kapatid. Tama ba? So, galit na galit sila. Maybe, hindi ko masasabi na namumuhi or hating Joseph, but they detested him. So, what did they do? They sold him to slavery and told their father that he was killed by wild animals. So, Joseph was brought to Egypt and lived apart from his family in a place he was not familiar with. And worse, in Egypt, he was falsely accused of attempted rape. And because of this, he languished 
in the dungeon, not just the prison cell, but in the dungeon for 10 to 13 years because he was falsely accused. So fast forward, with the kind of experience ni Joseph na minaltrato ng mga kapatid, na maltrato pa ng gusto sa Egypt, fast forward 30 years, more than 30 years after, ngayon nakaharap na si Joseph sa kanila and that they were pleading for forgiveness. It's not surprising that they were so afraid sa maaaring ganti na, na, na gawin ni Joseph sa kanila. Because for the brothers, yung kanilang ginawa kay Joseph was not a settled issue. Okay? Magkita natin, sa kwento pinatawad na ni Joseph, si yung mga kapatid niya, subalit sa kanilang isip, it was not yet a settled issue. Nangangamba sila, oops, namatay yung tatay natin, patay tayo ngayon. So, it was not a settled issue. Itong ating uh, pag-assert ng past natin, definitely, all of us have been hurt before. Maybe some were hurt intentionally or unintentionally by others, but all of us ay nakaranas na ng pain, ng being offended, nang hindi lang offended na mababaw, kundi nasaktan talaga tayo ng gusto. If you were the one hurt, you have to determine the sin or offense that was done against you and name the guilty person. Halimbawa, dito sa community natin sa KBCF, nagtampo ka or may ginawa isang kapatid, nyo, kapatid natin sa iyo. Hindi mo sasabihin na ayoko niya sa KBCF, ganyan niyang church na yan. Oops! Mali yun, ano? Ilan na nagkasala sa'yo? Isa lang. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng lahat eh ng buong pamilya. Isa lang kasi. Kaya dito, in a certaining our past, kung tayo'y, tayo'y uh, nasaktan or intentional, sinaktan. Identify natin ano yung pananakit na ginawa sa atin at sino ang nanakit. Huwag nating isasama yung buong mundo. Okay? Importanteng, importanteng ito. The same thing, if you were the offender, kung kayo ang nanakit, determine your sin or offense and name the person you offended or sinned against. Very, very important ito. So, in this, in this, what, what are we doing? We, we are bringing to light whatever is in darkness. Sa mga kapatid ni Joseph, unsettled issue. Kaya natatakot sila. So we've got to settle it so that there will be no fear. Bring to light whatever is in darkness. You know, this is the first, first directive. The Bible isn't concerned about when something happened. It could be yesterday. It could be 10 years ago. In the case of Joseph's brother, the offense o yung pagmamalupit kay Joseph happened more than 30 years before. Okay? And still affecting their present at that particular time. If you were the aggrieved also, uh, I would just like, I miss this. If we don't expose things in the past to the light of God's truth and love, they remain in darkness and are still alive today, creating fruits of darkness in, in us. So, instead na we maging matiwasay tayo, our past, Sabi nga, would catch up on us kasi unsettled and then we will not be happy. We will not be peaceful. At magkikreate pa ito ng magsasangasanga pa ito sa ating buhay na negatibo, hindi kaaya-aya at hindi katanggap-tanggap. So if you were to agree, acknowledge the sadness the offense cost you. Noong ang mga kapatid ni Joseph sa uh, Genesis 45 bumalik uli sa harapan ni Joseph upang bumili ng trigo, bumili ng wheat. Sinama nila si Benjamin, nakapatid talaga, buong kapatid ni Joseph. What happened when he saw his brothers again for the second time? He left them, went to his chamber and wept. Not just wept, ang ginamit na salita dito, he wailed na ang buong palasyo ay nakarinig sa kanyang matinding pag-iyak. Yung wailing ay hindi lang crying. 
Okay? Wailing, makita natin kung itatagalog natin ito sa malalim na salitang Tagalog, ito ay pumalahaw. Nagintindihan nyo ba yun? Pumalahaw na, na, alimbawa yung bang nakakita na ba kayong may ililibing na tao, mahal na mahal, sasama lang kami, sasama ako sa iyo, huwag mo kong iwan. Yung bang at the top of their voices, they would be crying. Hindi ito paid mga crying ladies, kundi totoong pag Pero walang pakialam sa mundo. Kahit sino makarinig, sisigaw niya yung kanyang pag -iyak. Very serious yun at very sincere na pag -iyak. Pumalahaw siya. He wailed. Because he was very, very sad. Bumalik yung sadness, yung pagmamalupit ng kanya mga kapatid, and it drove him to that extreme sadness. That's why he wept bitterly. But here, in verse 17, he again wept. Hindi siya pumalahaw, hindi siya umiyak ng malakas, but he wept. What does that say? It says to us, he did not deny or cover up his pain and sadness. He did not say, okay lang, matagal na yun eh. Matagal na lang yari yun, 30 years ago. So okay lang. No, he did not say that. He considered it, Joseph considered it, considered it sadness and wept. The second thing that we have to remember is this. We have to ask for forgiveness or extend forgiveness. Siya sabi natin, looking at the rear view mirror, ibig sabihin, alalahanin natin yung nangyari sa nakaraan. Because unless we look at the past, we cannot truly forgive or ask for forgiveness. Kasi alalahanin mo yung offense, and that is the past. So you cannot truly forgive, I forgive you, what are you forgiving? So please forgive me, what are you asking for forgiveness for? Hindi mo magagawa yun kung hindi mo alalahanin ang nangyari sa nakaraan. Forgiveness deals with the past. Forgiveness is God's way of making right yung experiences natin o yung mga tao na nakasakit sa atin. In the, uh, in the case of Joseph's brothers, they acknowledged the wrongs they committed against him and asked for forgiveness. In verse 17, please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. And in verse 18, they threw themselves down before him. So Joseph's brothers acknowledged the wrongs they committed against him and asked for forgiveness. Uh, secondly, Joseph forgave his brothers. What does it say in 17, the fourth part? When their message came to him, Joseph wept. When his brothers begged again for forgiveness, what did Joseph do? He wept. Ano ang interpretation ng, ng bagay na ito sa kanya? Hindi lang kalungkutan. Uh, sinasabi ng iba kasi, he wept because of extreme sadness. Kasi yung una niyang pagpapatawad sa kanyang mga kapatid during the second encounter niya, nang bumibili sila ng, ng trigo o ng wheat from Egypt, uh, nagpakilala si Joseph sa kanila at pinatawad yung mga kapatid. So, sa tingin ng marami, sinasabi nila na nalulungkot si Joseph kasi hindi siya pinaniwalaan ng kanyang mga kapatid. Okay? Now, what happens here? When this, this happened? This happened more than 17 years after the second encounter. When Joseph said, I forgive you, where is our father? He's still alive. So, pinadala niya ang kanya pong mga tinatawag na emissaries at kinuha yung kanyang tatay and the whole clan of Jacob and brought them to Egypt so that they could live there with him. So, yun, the fact na dinala mo, yung pamilya mo, sa lugar na mas maganda, this is a wonderful manifestation na pinatawad mo na. Kasi sabi na eh, kung galit pa si Joseph at that time, eh sasabihin niya, ay bagsawa ka. Sabi nga sa mga batang ngayon, bagsawa kayo sa buhay niyo. Okay, pinahirapan niyo kayo ngayon. Ngayon, lumuhot ka, gumapang ka. Okay, pero hindi yun ang ginawa niya. Kundi, kung parang halimbawa kung isang taong nasa states, yung may hirap niya mga mag-anak, pinatawad ko na kayo sa pagmamalupit niyo sa akin. Ngayon, gusto kong matamasa niyo. I would like you to experience what I'm experiencing. Okay, plenty. 
Okay, so dadalhin ko kayo sa Amerika. Ganun ang klase ng manifestasyon ng pagpapatawad ay pinakita ni Joseph. But he was sad because the, the brothers were not convinced that he really forgave them. But you know, for me, the weeping has another dimension. This was his final opportunity to truly say to his brothers, I have forgiven you. When did this happen? After the death of Jacob, the patriarch. You look at this, brothers and sisters. Parang yung pagdududa ng mga kapatid ay may basihan. Kasi masunuring anak si Jacob. Masunuring siyang anak. Alam niya na gusto ng kanyang ama na patawarin niya yung mga kapatid niya. At ito'y ginawa naman niya. Subalit, nang mamatay si Joseph, yung bang nakikita na siya lamang ang tao na pupwedeng pumigil kay, kay Joseph kung merong paghihiganting iniisip si Joseph. Okay? Siya lamang, si, si Jacob lang. And now that he died, he was dead, the brothers felt insecure. Hey, lagot tayo. Patay tayo nito. So, his weeping was a manifestation of his final opportunity to truly say to his, to his brothers, I have forgiven you. And what is the result of this? Joseph affirmed their brokenness and spoke kindly to them. Verse 21, the first part says, So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. Ito po talaga expression ng pagpapatawad. Ano? Uh, siya pa ang parabang, anong tawag natin dito? Siya pa ang umaamo dun sa uh, nagkasala sa kanya. A real expression of forgiveness. Joseph affirmed their brokenness and spoke kindly to them. And what would be the result if we forgive or ask for forgiveness? And definitely settles the matter. We have to anticipate God's healing and restoration. This is a beautiful verse. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. But the beauty of this is, alam ba ito ni Joseph at that time? Okay? Nung, nung siya ihulog sa balon, at hanguin uli at ipagbilibilang alipin. Alam ba niya yon? Alam pa din ba niya when he languished in jail for 13 years for a crime he did not even commit? He did not even think of that. Okay, alam ba niya yon? Pero makita natin in the unfolding of God's providence, we can anticipate God's healing and restoration when we do it His way. Okay? All the pains, all the hurts, surrender it to Him. And healing and restoration will be ours. I like what one pastor said about this. God never loses any of our past for His future when we surrender ourselves to Him. Every mistake, sin, and detour we take in our journey of life is taken by God and becomes His gift for a future, a blessing. Now, tignan mo buti natin, titigan natin yan. Lahat ba na nangyari sa buhay natin maganda? Yung pagiging makasalan natin, pangit eh, di ba? Yung, maybe, the sadness, the, the pain, the suffering that we have experienced, na maybe sa iba sa atin, hanggang ngayon, dinadala natin, eh, hindi ba gagandang bagay na ito? But you know something, yun sa Romans 8.28, na pagmisa na nilalaro-laro natin, pero napakahirap tanggapin during the time of pain. Okay? All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Now, tell, let, tell, let, tell me, kung ba sasabi niya yung verse na yan? Halimbawa, ikaw ay nagbi-business, nasunog yung business mo, and you lost 20 million pesos. Ang laki, no? 20 million. Eh, taasan na natin para ramdam na ramdam. Ano? You lost 20 million pesos kasi nasunog yung iyong warehouse. Lahat ng panindi mo, paninda mo nandoon. Will you be able to recite Romans 8.28? <laughs> Mahirap, ano? 
Kung ikaw ay may cancer sa pagkakataong ito, marirecite mo ba ang Romans 8.28? Pero ano nung pinapakita sa atin sa experience ni Joseph? When we fully surrender our pains, all our burdens to the Lord, we can be certain and we can anticipate healing and restoration. Yung sinasabi dito ni Pastor Peter Escasero, ay totoo. Itong lahat ng eksperyensya natin, kinukuha niya ito. What will be the result? Kahit ito, every mistake, sin and detour. Ha? God takes all of them and transforms them. God transforms them. So yung negatibo, kayang pasukin ng Panginoon yan upang ang resulta nito ay maging positibo at maganda sa atin. And the time of uh, Joseph, he was sold, betrayed by his brothers and sold. He was falsely accused. He was he languished in prison. Hindi magaganda experience yan. But then, because he was there, and he was experiencing this, the Lord maneuvered everything so that he would be facing Pharaoh and interpret correctly the dream of Pharaoh. And in that moment, instantaneous, he was declared by Pharaoh as second in command, only answerable to the emperor. Imagine that. From a very negative situation, boom! Wag daw sabi na misko, wag daw boom. Wala! Ibang klase yung effect, very positive experience. So, we can say, when we anticipate God's blessing, do mahirap tanggapin, do masakit ang katawan, masakit ang puso, yung sakit at pasakit. Pareho ang salita, no? pero iba yung pasakit eh. Okay? More on sa kalooban natin, yung sakit sa katawan. Pero yung pasakit, pag sinamahan mo pa yan, wala ka nang pupuntahan. But all of this, God can turn into wonderful experiences. All of us have brokenness. We as God's family, we are His hands. Wala kasing kabay ang Panginoon eh. Walang katawan ng Panginoon. Maliban sa ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo na nagkatawang tao. But we are His family and we become His hands in concrete manners to our brothers and sisters who are in need. Who are in pain. God has commanded us to love and minister to one another by giving compassion, mercy, help, strength. We are exhorted repeatedly in the New Testament to minister emotionally, spiritually, and physically to one another. Kaya yung pagtutulungan, sabi nga, very, ano yun, ano, very, parang physical ang, ang description ni Paul. Carry each other's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. And which is the law, what is the law of Christ? Love one another as I have loved you. We become the physical aspects of God's help when we do this to one another. I still remember, uh, whenever I remember this, uh, I become a little bit emotional at this time, but I was very emotional at that time when I learned about this. I pastored, not pastored, but I was the pulpit pastor of a church in, uh, here in Metro Manila. And I was there Saturday and definitely Sundays because we have two congregations, the morning English congregation and the Tagalog congregations. I spoke during those, but in between services, I also did a lot of equipping and training. But uh, I did not, I was not able, because of my limited time, I was not able to really know more about the people except for several few friends friendships that we have developed when we were staying there. But there was a certain guy. You would gravitate to, towards him because he was tall, not dark. He was tall, mestizo, and handsome. And very athletic. Dito nga si Jimmy Sperat, na dito kanina, ano, uh, tinatapatan nito uh, before na disqualify na yata, hindi na disqualify. In elevate natin ang KBC sa Hall of Fame, sa Upcoop Sports Fest kasi walang tumatalo sa basketball eh. 
And when I was a uh, youth minister of APCOP, sabi ko sa KBCF, bawal maglaro si Gidabin. Siyempre naman, bawal maglaro si Hubalde. Pati dyan si Jimmy Esperat, kaya <laughs> lalang kaibigan ko, bawal maglaro yan, naglaro sa Mika yan. Walang talo eh. Pero nung wala na yung KBCF, yung church na yun ang nananalo. Because he was really good. This guy was really good. His name is, was Wit. W-I-T. Espanyol ang pamilya. But, he would always, I would ever, I see him, I, I saw him, he would have a smile on his face. So I thought, okay. But I didn't know. I learned later that he had a very dysfunctional family. His father was a drug addict. And one of our elders really focused on him. Siya magdadala sa bikutan, sa rehab. Pero the moment na marilis sa bikutan, balik na naman, order na naman ng drugs. Kaya papalik-balik, sabi nga nung elder, Pastor, sawa na ako dito, bibitawan ko na to. Pero sabi ko, huwag muna. Pero that was dysfunctional. All his, oh, the, he had three sisters, and all of them left home. Kasi hindi nila matake yung dysfunctional system sa family. Hindi siya makaalis. Pero nakikita sa kanyang buhay, I learned later. Ayaw niyang umuwi sa bahay at matutulog siya sa village park. Maganda yung malaki yung village. Doon siya sa park, matutulog, magpapalipas ng gabi. Kaysa sa umuwi at makita niya yung kanyang tatay. And the church was aware of this situation. Definitely, the youth group was there with him. But then, even the youth group did not, Fatum did not fully grasp and understand the turmoil going on within this person, this young guy. Until too late, he shot himself, committed suicide. Sabi ko, nung malaman ko, I was already... I was already out of the church. I had to resign because I had to focus on one ministry. I think it was almost a year that I, when that happened. And sabi ko sa mga, sa mga kakilala ko doon, ah, bakit umabot sa ganyan? Why did it reach to the point of hopelessness for him? Where were we? Nasaan tayo? Pwede naman kasi na na-intercept natin. Bakit hindi natin nagawa? I felt responsible as well. Even though that happened when I was no longer there, but then, I knew the guy. He committed suicide. So this, this truth as being God's hand is really rock solid. It should be happening. But it can only happen when we become real, when we become wounded healers, when we have settled our past, settled it with the Lord, and settled it with other people, and have, and have received forgiveness, and have received healing and restoration from the Lord, then, and only then, could we have the capacity to extend our helping hand to others. That is our credential. Yung tinatawag nilang street credibility. We have the street cred. Why? Because we have experienced it ourselves. We have a member in another church where we pastored for eight years. Bago ako dumating, yung anak niya na 22 years old, youth leader and praise and worship leader, nagde-date sila ng kanyang girlfriend at that time sa restaurant, bigla lang nag-collapse and never regain consciousness. Kahit na na-autopsy, hindi malaman kung ano ang ikinamatay. Yun ang masakit eh. Hindi alam kung ano ang ikinamatay. He died. What a waste, we say. Definitely, I said that. What a waste. I remember the mother, the grieving mother, and the grieving father approached me when we got there to start our pastorate. And they said, Pastor Ep, you know the story of my, what happened to my son, our son. Yes, I do. I would like, we would like to offer our services. We would like to be the anchor couple for our youth ministry. Woo! Sabi ko, this is great. I did not tell, tell them that is great, but then I felt it. I, I thought about it. I, that was great. And I said, 
Praise the Lord. Our young people need a lot of guidance. And you have experienced something that many parents haven't experienced. And you have the heart and you have the burden for this. Go for it. And they serve for almost 10 years until, until uh, the father, Hector, joined his son in heaven. But they use their brokenness, the healing that they received, but they use their brokenness in order to minister. And their ministry was well received. Kaya may, kung mayroong may problema, pag nilapitan ni Susan na limbawa at kinausap, may street credibility. This woman or this man went through a lot of pain. And they have the right to speak to me about the pain that I'm experiencing now. Kaya hindi po yung, ano ba tawag dito? Uh, palabas sa ilong? Okay lang yan, kapatid. Ay, ayaw natin, pag tayo'y nahihirapan at nasasaktan, ayaw natin makakarinig ng okay lang yan, di ba? Okay, okay lang yan. Yung mga kaibigan ni Job, nagkaroon sila ng problema. For several weeks, they just sat with Job and felt his pain. No oras na magsalita sila, saka sila nagkaroon ng problema kay Job. Okay? But the, the point is, they were not there. He, they did not experience the pain that Job was experiencing. That's why in police departments, pag merong nasugatan na polis, naputulan ng kamay, naputulan ng paa, at sa mga sundalo, galing sa gera, sino yung pinapadala nila para mag-comfort? Isang sundalo, naputulan paa, naputulan kamay. Pag sinabi ng taong ito, mahirap yan, pinagdaanan ko yan. But you know, later, you will feel okay. Meron silang hope, instead ng mainis, there will be hope. Why? Because I see this guy not having an arm or not having a leg and he is okay. I'll be like him. I will be okay. Pero kung isang matipunong lalaki ang pupunta na sabi, okay lang yan, bro. Hindi po pwede. Magagalit yun. Because walang credibility eh. So, sabi nga ni Pastor Rick Warren, don't waste your pain. Don't waste your hurt. Gamitin natin yon sa ikabubuti ng ating mga kapatid sa Panginoon. Now, let us remember this. What is our sermon sentence? The thing that we need to fully embrace. God wants us to surrender our painful past in order to receive healing and restoration. The picture in your program we might from time to time look in the rearview mirror of our lives or for your life. And when you do that, you might see ugliness and pain of the past. But because we have settled you to the Lord, we have settled our pain and hearts with, with the Lord and maybe with the other people concerned, the present, the one in front of us, not at our back, but the one in front of us is very bright and very clear. And we can say with gladness in our hearts, God indeed makes things beautiful in His time. But the thing is, we've got to surrender our painful past in order to receive healing and restoration from the Lord. I would encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you are still carrying a certain pain, a certain hurt, your past is not yet settled, I'd like, you to, I'd like to encourage you to do just that. God bless you as you continue to live for Him.